If you clicked on this video, you're probably having some trouble seeing up close. And if you're having some trouble seeing up close, you are not alone. In fact, everybody experiences changes in their vision between about the ages of 40 and 45. It's called presbyopia. In this video, I'll tell you what's happening with your eyes, as well as giving you some options for treatment. And make sure to stay around until the end, because I'll be talking about some revolutionary new treatments that I think you'll be really excited about that are coming out in the next few years. All that in this video. Intro! Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. On this channel, I post educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Make sure to hit the subscribe and bell down below so you never miss a video. While you're at it, I've included some helpful show notes down in the description below, so feel free to check those out at any point during the video. Well, if you've been here before, you know what time it is. My pupils, let's go to eye school. So when you're a kid, the lens in your eye is super, super clear and super flexible. And whether you need to see things far away in the distance, in the middle ground like on a computer or your car dash, or even up close, the lens within your eye is automatically changing focus for you and you don't even have to think about it. You can easily you can easily visualize targets at all different distances effortlessly. For reference, here's an eyeball. This is orienting you. This is the cornea. Here's our lens. And then this is the back of your eye. When you're seeing, light rays are coming in through your cornea and being focused by the team of your cornea and your lens. Like I said, when you go to see something up close, your eyes automatically um, flex and focus in and when you're a kid this lens is very very flexible so when that process occurs the focal length changes slightly and you're able to visualize things up close however in presbyopia this lens slowly slowly changes how it acts the lens of our eye is really, really interesting because as we get older, it continues to lay down extra layers, meaning it gets thicker and thicker as we age, and it also gets stiffer and stiffer. So when you try to look at something up close and your lens has become more stiff, as happens in our late thirlies, thirlies. Thirlies. <laughs> As occurs in our late 30s and early 40s, it becomes much more difficult to see things up close. At first, in your late 30s, you might just notice that at the end of a long day or if you're really tired, you can no longer focus on things up close. You might find yourself pushing them back in order to see them. And then eventually, you just can't focus up close anymore. Luckily, this whole process slows down at about age 55. In my patients, by the time you're about 55, you've lost all the focusing that you're gonna lose. And the good news is, is that this process doesn't just go on and on and on throughout your whole life. You actually start losing that focusing in your early 40s, but by your mid 50s, you've lost what you're going to lose. That is the good news. Okay, so that's what's happening in presbyopia. And like I said, it happens to everyone. But there are many, many options for treatment, for ways to help your up close vision again. And so in this part of the video, we're gonna break down each of those options. So let's start with your over the counter options. When you first start noticing that trouble up close, you might notice those around you are grabbing reading glasses and magnifiers, and you might be tempted to do that as well. That is a certainly a very viable option. So the two over-the-counter options would be magnifying glasses. You can actually purchase a magnifying glass to just look at things that you need to look at. My advice with those is to look for one that has a light attached that's really gonna optimize your ability to see. 
And then your other over-the-counter option are over-the-counter reading glasses. We've all seen these at stores. They're typically very cheap and very accessible, and they come in a range of powers. Roughly speaking, when you're selecting reading glasses, you're going to need a lower power in your early 40s and a higher power as you get into your 50s, mid 50s, late 50s. In general, if you had a zero prescription for distance, meaning you don't wear glasses at all, you might find yourself helped by a plus one in your early 40s or a plus 125 or 1.5. However, as you get older, that's just not enough focusing power, and so you may find yourself reaching more for those 250s or 3.0 readers. Now, one problem with readers is that they are only focusing you in at one distance. In your late 40s and 50s, you'll start to notice that the computer's not clear, and, and it's not clear up close either. In that case, you really need two separate powers, and so you may find yourself, oh, 125 works on computer, but I need a 250 up close. There are other ways to address this issue, which we'll get to in a moment, but that is one of the cons of readers, is that there's really only one focal distance. Another con of readers is that they're not made for your face, so their pupillary distance and the way they're aligned is not set up exactly for you, and so the optical quality might not be as great as if you had glasses that were made for you. Another con is that they're not made to your actual prescription, so if you have a small amount of astigmatism, you may see better out of a custom reader, a prescription reader. All right, so just as a recap, over-the-counter you'll find magnifiers, you'll find over-the-counter reading glasses, and both of those options are really great, especially before you get yourself to an eye doctor. Feel free to go to that store, pick up the reading glasses, and give them a try, and select the ones that work best for your eyes and your working distance. Your second set of options really revolve around prescription glasses. So in prescription glasses, we can make three, three to four general options. Number one, we can do single vision glasses, meaning one distance is clear. Obviously, most people are familiar with like a distance only prescription that you wore in your 20s, um, but we can also do custom readers to any distance. Let's say your computer is at 27 inches. I can make you a perfectly customized reading glass for that working distance. The same is true if you like to knit or crochet and you find that your working distance is eight inches. Um, that's much closer than the typical, you know, reading a book distance, but we can absolutely get you focused in on that location. So single vision readers and computer glasses are an option. Your second option are lined bifocals, lined trifocals. So people use the word bifocal, but a true bifocal is going to have a line in it. Among bifocals, there are multiple different kinds, but just to kind of keep it general, usually they're what we call a D-sag, and they have like a little D-shape to the, the bifocal. The beauty of bifocals is that anything above the line is clear at distance and anything below is clear up close. Now there's room for customization in these as well because we can actually make the top portion of the glasses for intermediate and the bottom for near if we wanted to. With trifocals, you're essentially getting three distances in one lens and those are also separated by very distinct lines in the lenses. So you've got your distance at the top, Intermediate has a small segment in the middle, and then there's reading down below. Pros of these, they're easy to get used to. You have the whole lens that's clear. Um, you don't have any distortion off to the side, which we'll talk about when we get to progressives. And so many people will go for these because they're an easier adaptation. The cons are that it's not a progressive design. It's not a gradual change. It's a very sharp change from distance to middle to up close. And if you're not working with those exact distances, you might find yourself frustrated at times and unable to see what you're trying to see. Your third prescription option is the world of progressives. And truly, I need to make an entire video on progressives because there are so, so, so many out there. 
In general, a progressive is like a trifocal. So same concept that we have distance, we have middle, and we have up close. Except in a progressive, those powers are blended. These are kind of the gold standard. I'm putting almost all of my patients in progressives these days. They truly give you a range of vision much more like how you used to see in your 20s. You can see distance, you can change to intermediate and up close, back and forth, and truly all zones are accounted for. The pros are that it gives you better vision at all distances. The cons with progressives are that they can be more difficult to adapt to. You also have a small amount of distortion. By virtue of a progressive design, it's pretty much impossible to get rid of all of the distortion in the sides of the lenses. And so you may find that that really causes a swimminess in vision or you have difficulty adapting. In general, some of the more recent technologies and progressives are much easier to get used to than they used to be. And my patients, in fact, I would estimate upwards of 90% of people are able to get used to progressives nowadays. There's also specialty progressives. So we have occupational progressives that, you know, that's for someone that really has works in tight quarters and potentially has multiple screens that person's gonna benefit from an occupational progressive with their intermediate zone straight ahead of them and reading down below. Now that's a separate pair of glasses that lives at your, at your work environment, but they're extremely helpful. I have lots of my attorneys and accountants and data input people that really sit within a cubicle or on multiple screens, IT. These are wonderful glasses for folks in those types of um, working conditions. In our contact lenses, we have a few options. Number one, we could just leave you in distance only, really optimizing that distance vision, and then you'll have to grab readers, either prescription or over the counter for anything arm's length on in. Wouldn't seem like that's a, an option most people select, and you'd be right, it's not typically the choice, but for some people, they really need their distance perfectly clear, and so they'll opt to just use readers up close. Your second option, and, and an option that we had, have had for a long time, this is a tried and true option, is something called monovision. We do monovision by selecting your dominant eye, which, fun fact, is not always the same as your dominant hand, and making that your perfectly crisp and clear distance eye. Then we make your non-dominant eye your reading eye. Your doctor will have to work with you to get the balance just right because monovision can make your night vision a little blurry if the balance is off. It can also make you feel like your brain kind of can't get used to it. And so, like I said, your doctor will have to find the balance, but monovision is an extremely effective way to do distance and near. The con of monovision, though, is you've only got two eyes. If you just had three, we could do distance middle and up close, but you've only got two. So we're forced to make one of them for far away, you gotta be able to drive legally, and then the other one up close. So that leads us to the third option, which are multifocal contact lenses. Options in multifocal contacts have exploded in the last couple of years. We have spherical um, multifocal options we have had for years, but recently we have a, a spate of new contact lenses available that incorporate your astigmatism. These lenses correct both eyes at distance, both eyes up close, and give you the added advantage of having your depth perception as well as having vision at all distances. Talk to your doctor to see what type of contact lens prescription is best for you. Next, we have our surgical options. A lot of patients ask me if LASIK is a good idea for them when they have presbyopia. LASIK can only correct you really at one distance at this point, and so you would be limited in doing LASIK for monovision. If you decided to go the monovision route, I would recommend trying it in contact lenses first to make sure that you have the balance correct, that you can really function like you need to before you make that permanent. The second option are cam corneal camera inlays. So these are relatively new and it is possible to have this surgery done as well. I'm not super familiar with it. None of my patients have had it done 
And so I can't speak to it broadly, but I just am here to tell you it exists. <laughs> Your third surgical option, and sometimes I tell patients, you know, you're really kind of closer to cataract surgery. So um, you'll have to watch my other video about cataracts, but the next change that happens to your lens after it loses its ability to focus is we start to form cataracts. So particularly when patients get into their late 50s, early 60s, and they have a little bit of cataract forming, um, you know, cataract surgery has an option of a multifocal implant. There's toric implants, there's multifocal implants. Similar to LASIK, if you were about to have cataract surgery, you could do a monovision implant so that you made your monovision permanent. The second thing you could do is an actual multifocal implant. Those are gonna give you vision much more like a multifocal contact. It's a multifocal implant. And so seeing both eyes distance, middle and up close is certainly possible. And for this option, I have many patients who have done it that are thrilled with the results. All right, as promised, this is the part you've been waiting for. We have some absolutely amazing new presbyopia treatments coming soon. Um, I'm on advisory boards for some of these, and so I can't go into too, too much detail, but um, there are now presbyopia drops coming. So the concept is being able to take a drop in each eye every morning that um, alters your accommodation, alters your focal length and your depth of focus, and allows you to see up close through your work day. There are drops in the sort of final FDA approval stages. Multiple companies have drops that they're trying to bring to market, but that's something to watch for in the next couple of years. Make sure to leave me a comment down below about your feelings on taking an eye drop every day to fix your focusing issue instead of having to um, get glasses or contact lenses. I personally feel like it's going to revolutionize presbyopia management. I think it's going to make a huge difference for so many patients. Um, when you get into your 40s and start having trouble up close, it's people do not like it. It's, it's one of the hardest conversations I have, and I have it on a daily basis. It's really awful, and it's so hard to you know just even get through your day not being able to focus up close. So having drops is going to be incredible. And finally, if you're watching this video and you're pretty sure this is what's happening to you, I've got a couple tips for you that are going to make your eye doctor visit for your first time contacts or glasses so much easier and make it so that your doctor can really nail down your prescription and what you need. So the first is to take a look at your working area. So take a look at your computer setup, your desk setup. Um, if you work in a factory and you have pull down com computer monitors, take a really close look at your working environment and do a little bit of measuring. So if you could write down how far your monitor sits from you, how many monitors you have, and also take note of the height of the monitors. Are they stacked this way? Are you having to look up and down, or is it more back and forth? This information is gonna help both your doctor and your optician in fitting glasses, contacts, whatever it may be, that are best for your particular working environment. The second is to keep in mind that no matter which of the options that I talked about you choose, you will have to go through an adaptation process. Your brain has to adapt to these different types of corrections. If you've been wearing gl glasses your whole life and you're used to just getting a new pair, maybe adapting for a day and it's fine, this could be a little bit different for you. As we start to work with different distances, we find that it takes a little while for patients' brains to sort of accept what's going on. And that's 100% normal. It helps a lot if you go in knowing that you'll have to adapt to whichever visual correction you choose. Experiencing presbyopia is definitely a jarring experience. It's no fun to lose your focusing ability up close. But fortunately, there are so many treatment options and I know that your local eye doctor will be able to help you beautifully. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video today. Make sure you like, 
subscribe, leave a comment down below and tell me your experience with presbyopia and tune in every single week. I'll see you next time.